This video explains uh, four forecasting techniques. We're going to talk about the naive, the three-month moving average, the three-month weighted moving average, and exponential smoothing. Uh, the next video we'll talk about how we analyze these four forecasting techniques to determine which one is the better uh, based on the amount of error. Well, let's start with the naive or the simple forecasting technique. All it does is look at the previous time period. So we have a year's worth of data here, uh, shed sales for January, February, March, and on through December. So if we were to make the forecast for January of next year, we just look back to the previous month, and that would be December, and our forecast would be 14. But we could actually make a forecast uh, for all of these months and uh, see how well our forecast would compare to the actual sales. So the soonest we could make a forecast would be February. Now we can't make a forecast for January because we don't have December's sales. So in Excel this is pretty straightforward. Uh, this forecast is just equal to the previous time period. So our forecast for February would be 10 where our actual sales was 12. Now we'll come back and show you how you measure and look at uh, which has the least amount of error. I'm just going to copy this down. Uh, we do not have actual sales uh, for January, but we can make the forecast for January and we can double check to make sure that's correct. So it's using uh, the sales, the actual sales for December to do the forecast and we'll see what our sales were in January. Once again, I'll just double check the forecast for July is the previous time period, June. Let's go on to the three-month moving average. The three-month moving average looks back to the three previous months uh, to the month you're trying to forecast. So we need three months worth of data. If this was four months, uh, four-month moving average, we would need four months. If it was two months, you would only need two months. Uh, so you just go with whatever they tell you uh, in regards to the homework or the exam. So the soonest we could make a forecast would be April because we need uh, January, February, and March. Uh, so what we would do here in Excel, instead of just adding them up and dividing by three, I can actually uh, bring up a function Excel. Average is the function. And in parentheses, you then highlight. So we want to highlight January, February, March uh, for our April forecast. Now, a mistake that some students make is they include the uh, the actual sales for April, but you can't do that if you're trying to do a forecast. Uh, that would become clearer if you're trying to make the uh, January. Uh, you can't include the actual sales for January. We would include December, November, October. So you need the three previous months to, uh, to the month you're trying to forecast or the time period you're forecasting here. And so we can now copy this down. And once again, you'll want to kind of double check. Uh, let's simplify this here, and we can uh, reduce this down to uh, um, no decimal places. Probably would be the best bet. In a forecasting model. So we can click on here. The forecast for October is averaging September, August, and July. So it appears that it's doing correctly. Um, let's do the three-month uh, weighted moving average. Now, this is a little bit different in that we want to give our heavier weight to the most recent time period. Um, we will always tell you what the weights are, or uh, um, if they don't, it's you can simply you can simply do a three, two, one. So, if it's a four-month moving average, four, three, two, one. Uh, but on your homework and on the exam, we'll always tell you what the weights are. And so in this case, we are going to use the 3, 2, 1. And so we literally have to put out the problem here. So you want to uh, make sure that it does this correctly. So use lots of parentheses. We're going to take, uh, so we're going to do, the soonest we can do a forecast is April because we need three months worth of data. We're going to take March, and we're going to times it times the weight of Three. We're going to give it the heaviest weight. We'll add to that then uh, February, which we're giving a weight of two. 
and we'll close parentheses and then we'll add the last one. Uh, we can just put that directly in because that was given a weight of one. So one times January sales would just be uh, that number. Uh, the key here is that you need to divide by the sum of the weight. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to insert parentheses around all of the addition to make sure that that's done first. So we multiply by the weights, we add then up those numbers, and then we finally divide by the sum of the weights, which in this case, 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6. Uh, so always remember to divide by the sum of the weights, not 3. Uh, even though we have three time periods, it's the sum of the weights, whatever the sum of the weights would be. And that would give us a number. Now we could actually copy this down. Um, ideally, in Excel, what would be uh, the better way to do this is actually to put the weights somewhere and then reference the weights. And so then you could change the weights and these numbers would automatically change. I've uh, chosen to just to hard code these in. So we'll, uh, we'll take a look at this. Uh, let's format it. So once again, we'll get rid of the decimals uh, just to make it a little bit cleaner looking. Okay, the last technique is called exponential smoothing. Exponential smoothing um, tries to uh, take into account smoothing, but it also uh, tries to take into account how well you did on your forecast. So it's probably the most advanced of these uh, four techniques. Um, the formula, actually, what you do is you calculate the forecast error and then you multiply that times a beta uh, to, uh, to figure out, uh, or an alpha, what they're calling an alpha, an exponential smoothing. Just like the, the weighted average will give you the weights, we'll also tell you what the, the, uh, the alpha is in this case. Um, in regards to interpreting the alpha, the higher the alpha, uh, so it's anywhere between 0 and 1. It's a smoothing consonant. Uh, one uh, usually indicates that they believe that the data uh, is, is going to change pretty dramatically. Most often you see alphas such as uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. The closer it gets to 1, the more they think the data is changing, and therefore the more the modification will make. But all you do in this formula for exponential smoothing, let's say, we're going to use uh, a smoothing constant of 0.5, so right in the middle. Uh, so your smoothing constant, your alpha, is going to be between 0 and 1. So 0.5 means that we think it's somewhere in the middle. Um, it is changing, but not changing as dramatically as a 0.7 or 0.8 or even a 1. Uh, so we're not using the full error. And so this formula here, um, once again, it works off of, uh, you basically need um, the, the actual sales and the forecast. And so for us to do this, we need an additional thing. Uh, for exponential smoothing, we also need to know what the forecast uh, for, uh, for January would have been. And we could start immediately with January and work our way all the way down to January of next year. Um, so you need to know both the forecast for a time period and the actual sales to give yourself a starting point. So let's say that our forecast uh, for January uh, was, was 10. <laughs> so we're going to just give you that. So we'll give you the, uh, the alpha, the exponential smoothing constant, and the forecast. So then we could do then for February, uh, because you need both the actual and the forecast from a previous time period. And what this is, is that you simply take uh, the previous uh, forecast, uh, which in this case is this uh, 10, uh, as we told you. So that previous forecast for January was 10, and we're going to add to that then uh, what our, our error uh, was. Uh, but the first thing we do is we multiply that error times the uh, the uh, the alpha, in this case, the 0.5 that we talked about, the smoothing constant. Now I can reference this cell, but I'm just going to build it right into the formula. And we're going to times it times. Then what it is is you take the actual uh, sales, in this case, the 10 
uh, minus uh, the forecast. So in this case, it's going to give us a, a, a zero error. We were right on. So it's going to add nothing to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the previous forecast. So our forecast for February uh, is 10. <laughs> now let me show you how we proceed from here. So this one, now that we have this exponential smoothing forecast, uh, once again, we take the forecast. <laughs> Uh, we add to that then the uh, 0.5 times and here where we take the uh, the actual minus the, uh, the the forecast in this case 10. Now I should be able to copy this formula down uh, and we'll double check to make sure that it did it correctly and I can get all the way to January. So let's look at January in this regards. So January took the forecast for December which was 19. It uh, added to that the exponential uh, or the smoothing consonant, the 0.5 times the difference between in this case, it would have been a, a negative number. We were actually much higher than, uh, than our actual uh, uh, sh sales. And so it's going to lower than that forecast for the next month. But that's exponential smoothing. So it appears to have done it correctly. Now, once again, we can uh, clean this up. You'll see that exponential smoothing, the decimal places keep getting larger and larger because of... Uh, uh, we're looking at back at, uh, our, at our errors and how accurately we're forecasting those. So let's uh, format this, and that would give us uh, then uh, no decimal places there. And there you have it. So once again, let's go back and quickly review these four forecasting techniques. The naive or the simple approach just looks to the previous time period. So the forecast for February, it only requires one previous time period to do that forecast. Uh, the forecast for June is just what it was in May. Um, the three-month average, um, depending on how many months you're averaging, in this case three months, it needs three previous time periods and we simply average those together. So this here for August, if we click on it, it averaged Ju uh, July, June, and May. Just to average those together. The three month moving average will give you the weights. Uh, in this case, we decided the weights are 3, 2, 1. So the key is that you make sure that you give the most recent month the heaviest weight, not reverse. Uh, so July gets the weight of 3. Uh, we multiply June by the weight of 2, and uh, May is by uh, um, a weight of 1. And then we divide by the sum of the weights, not by 3. Uh, the number of time periods, but by the sum of the weights. Uh, just make sure you apply the weights correctly and divide by the sum of the weights. Last one is exponential smoothing. It requires two things. It requires actual sales or your actual uh, uh, indicator and then a forecast for that same time period. So in this case, if we gave you the, uh, the forecast and the actual sales for January, we could do a forecast uh, for February. And what it does is it takes into account the actual the forecast and adds to that any amount of error times some exponential smoothing constant, the alpha. In this case, we're saying it's somewhere in between. So uh, it can be between zero and one. One indicates that they expect changes, a lot of changes. And so it's going to magnify out that error more dramatically. So we can come down here and look at uh, September uh, to show you what we mean. So we used the, the forecast uh, for August uh, and we added to that uh, what the difference was, the error. So here we were um, seven, uh, we were seven under <laughs> uh, and we multiply that uh, by our 0.5 and then we add that to our forecast and that becomes then our forecast for uh, September 26. So uh, that concludes this video. The next video, we'll talk about how we go about measuring error for these uh, four techniques. Uh, you do not have to uh, uh, know how to do... Uh